Amen. Amen. At this time, pastors, you can come share the word of the Lord. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Good to be here. We want to welcome you. And if you are a first timer today, okay, you're not a stranger. And you're always family. Yes. Amen. Yes. So welcome. We're glad you're here. And we want uh, Brother Butler to stand and say something for the Lord. Please, sir. Yes. Amen. In the past five years uh, that I've been here, it's truly been a blessing to see the family growing the way that it is. Uh, it's, it's like so many of us have heard. It's not goodbyes, always see you later. No matter where you go, there's always the family of God. That's, that's, you know, you know that somebody's got your back. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Appreciate Brother Butler and Sister Butler and Isaac. Amen. And uh, he is on his way to a new endeavor in life. Okay, he'll be uh, leaving probably early in the morning. So he's on his way to Fort Benning. Go do some infantry training. So uh, praying for him. I said, have you been working out? He's like, well, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> and we appreciate him and Sister Butler. Be praying for her. She's going to go and spend some time with family. Mm. And she's with Fatma here, too. Yes. I'm her uncle. <laughs> you can tell. You can see the family resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm her spiritual uncle. Yes. And we love her. And looking forward to... Uh, we've already seen Isaac. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. They showed us an ultrasound. And he's looking at you with his eyeball open like that. Like, what y'all looking at? <laughs> You know, I'm trying to rest in here. <laughs> but anyway, pray for them, okay? Yes. Keep them in your prayers. Yes. And uh, let's go ahead and go to our Bible reading today. Kind of goes along with uh, what we've just shared. You know, thank God that every day is a new opportunity. Yes. It doesn't, doesn't matter about the failures of the past. Yes. Today is a new day. And I'm, I'm so thankful that God designed it that way okay that it wasn't just one time period daylight all the time mm -hmm. okay but we get to rest and we get to wake up to a new beginning every day mm -hmm. we have a new opportunity every day yes okay, maybe we had some issues yesterday well that's yesterday we have today amen amen to look to God and let God help us, let God be gracious and merciful to us, and for us to experience the love of God in our lives. Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our Bible reading. We're going to be in the Gospel of John, chapter 10. And I want to begin reading in verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And I want to use this today, and with the help of the Lord, I want to preach about the door of blessing. Amen. Let's go ahead and ask the Lord's blessing today upon the service. And Reverend Rossi, sir, would you pray, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be in your house. We thank you, Lord, for the family of God. We thank you for your word. We ask you now to bless Pastor. Help him, Lord. Guide him through your word. And God, just touch our hearts in a special way. Help us, Lord, to see Christ. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've already spoken about new opportunities every day. New beginnings. New doors that are opened to us. You know, the Bible teaches me that if God opens a door, that no man can shut it. Yes. God gives you an opportunity to do something in your life, amen? The most important thing that we could do is accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. To repent of our sin, to accept the mercy and the forgiveness that God freely offers us. Today we have that opportunity. And there's no one that can take that opportunity from you because God is the one that has opened that door and made that way. 
And God is the one that has brought you and I to that threshold in our lives. Now, what is a threshold? It's that thing at the bottom of the door, okay, that you have to step over yes. to get from one place to another. So if we want to get from maybe where we have been in life to a new place, a better place, yes. amen, yes. a place with God, we need to take some very simple steps today. And we'll get into that in just a moment. But you know, God's salvation and having a relationship with God is not a hard thing. God did not base it upon our intellect. God did not base it upon our physical ability. Okay? God did not base it upon our leadership skills. God simply based it upon you and I having faith in him or trusting what God says, believing what God says, Amen. and then acting upon it. Yes. Amen? Amen? Okay, and we can all do that. Thank God for that today. Thank God we have this opportunity to go from wherever we have been in life, this new day, this door of blessing that is open to us, to step into a new life with the Lord Jesus Christ because he is that door of blessing, that door or that way into being saved. Yes. Okay, now, Pastor, what do you mean about being saved? Jesus is that way of salvation. Okay, and we all need salvation. Okay, Peter was speaking in the book of Acts and he spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ, the apostle Peter. Okay, and he made a statement. He said, there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Every one of us must be saved yes. from the consequences of from sin and from its consequences. Okay, we've all, the Bible teaches you and I in the book of Romans in a couple of different places, chapter three and chapter five, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't think I have to convince anybody of that today. I think we'd be, we would be honest with ourselves, we would admit that. The pastor, I've sinned, you know, that's right, I've done it. Well, we all have. And we're not here today to say that it's okay. Okay, but we're neither, are we here today to throw stones and to look down upon you and to think that we're holier than thou? Because we're not. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible also teaches us, brother and sister, that the wages of sin is death. Yes. Okay, it doesn't stop there. Okay, the payment for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we know that when the Bible says that it's talking more than a physical death because even people that come to the Lord and accept him as their Lord and Savior die. Okay? And they go to heaven. Okay? But it's talking about a spiritual death. Being dead spiritually to God. Being separated from God because of our sin. Being away from God. And we can go back in the Bible and we can see that Adam and Eve sinned against God I think most of us know about that, how they partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God told them not to do. They did it anyway. There was a separation between them and God. They were no longer close to God, but they were driven out of the Garden of Eden, away from God, okay? And that process of dying began in their life. They began, they died spiritually and they began to die physically. But God didn't leave mankind in that condition. God made an opportunity. He opened a door with his son, Jesus Christ. He sent him at the right time. Okay? When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born, brother, sister, under the law, that he might redeem them that were under the law. God sent his son, Jesus, to die on an old rugged cross, to pay for my sin, for your sin, for the sin of the whole world, whoever would receive it by faith into their life. He offers us grace and mercy. He offers us forgiveness today. He will not only forgive you of your sin, but he will wash it away and give you and I a new opportunity, a door of blessing, a life with God that we can walk through. Jesus is that way. Not only did Peter say that there was no other name under heaven 
whereby we must be saved. And I know that people have their different religions and their different dogmas and all of this stuff. Uh, and people have their different ways of thinking. But you know, we could go and we could look at the book of Romans. Man is not ignorant of God. Man has already known, always known from the very beginning about the truth and about God and about what he would do. We could even, you could even look in, into different cultures and, and uh, uh, maybe even Native American cultures and cultures of some other societies in different parts of the world. And they all have one thing in common or several things in common. Actually, they have in common that there was a great flood. Okay. They have in common that there would be a woman that would bring forth some kind of savior into the world. Yes. Because God didn't keep it secret from man. God let mankind know. And people deviated into different things away from the truth. But thank God, God, brother and sister, kept his word. He sent his son. And Jesus spoke of himself in John chapter 14 and verse 6. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He is the truth. He is the way. That innocent, sinless son of God died on a cross to take my place and your place in judgment. That if we would turn to God, seek God for forgiveness, call upon the name of the Lord, we would be saved from sin and its consequences. I don't have to die separated from God. I can be reconciled to God this morning. Man, you want to talk about a door of blessing. Okay, that is a door of blessing. Moses spoke to the children of Israel and he told them he was preparing uh, for his departure. He knew that he would die. Okay, he was getting uh, very old and he knew that it was time to leave this life. And he told them that he set before them, uh, God set before them blessing and cursing, life and death. Really, it's a no-brainer, brother and sister Joshua. Uh, excuse me, uh, did did the same thing. He spoke to them before his demise and before he died. And he said to them, he said, choose you this day who you will serve. Okay. If you want to serve the gods, the false gods on the other side of that water, you go ahead and do that. But he said, for as, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. Amen. Can I get a witness today in the Amen. house of God? We will serve the Lord. Yes. Come on now. You know, my Bible teaches me that I am to be a leader in my family. Okay, now this is not popular today, but it's what the Bible teaches and it's right. God is right. Let God be true and every man a liar. Okay, it teaches me that I am to be the head of my family. The man is to be the head, the leader of the family. And that's the right thing to do. I want to lead my wife in the right direction. Amen. I want my wife to go to heaven. Are you here? I want my wife to, to have that door of blessing in her life. Come on now. And I'm going to do that several ways. I'm going to set an example for her by being a godly man. Huh? Come on now. And brother and sister, she's going to follow God and going to follow me as I follow God. And you know what? She's going to follow the word of God. And you know what that's going to make her? It's going to make her... Brother, sister, a daughter of God Amen. and is going to make her a better wife to me. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's true. Huh? You know what? I don't have to worry about my wife and what she's going to do because I know that she loves God. Amen. And she loves me. Amen. She's going to do right by God yes. and she's going to do right by me. Yes. Can I get a witness yes. today? Amen. Huh? Man, brother, sister, let me tell you something. We need to help one another. And she helps me too. Whenever I get squirrely in my thinking, okay, maybe I get a bad attitude or something. My, my thinking's not right. Pastor, that happens to you? That happens to everybody. <laughs> That's why it helps you when you come to church. Yes. God helps us yes. to get our thinking right. Yes. right. That's why we encourage you to read the Bible. It helps you to get your thinking right. Amen. We encourage you to pray because it helps you to get your thinking right. Yes. Yeah, it happens to me sometimes. And sometimes she'll just tell me, okay, hey, you need to stop that. You need to cut that out. <laughs> huh? Because she don't want her husband to die and go to hell. Amen. She don't want her husband to be all messed up. Amen. We're in this thing together. Amen. We love one another. We love God. Yes. 
Are you here? We're making each other better. Amen. Come on now. Yes, amen. You got you got to come to these these decisions uh, in your your relationship. This is what we're going to do. But, but we were courting before we, we were dating and stuff. I was going to church. She was going to church. We knew we knew that's what we were going to do because we wanted a strong relationship. I have to. I don't want to worry. I have to worry about my wife. You know, because if my wife loves God, I ain't gonna worry about somebody getting hurt. They can't get her. Right. Because she got God got her. Yes. And I got her. Amen. Are you with me today? Okay, let's go on. That that's not on here, but we'll go ahead and throw that out there. God knows. Okay, God loves you. Yes. He really does. Yes, he does. And you know, you can build your life upon the Lord and it can be strong and yes. it can stand. The storms are going to come. I'm not up here blowing smoke and trying to tell you that marriage is some kind of fairy tale. You got to learn to work things out. Yes, you got to learn to, to, to uh, compromise. I'm not talking about compromising what's right. I'm not going to, not my wife, you know, I'm not going to tell her, hey, baby, let's go out and buy a dime bag and we're going to go down to the park and get a bottle and we're going to get drunk and party. Well, I don't want my husband to get mad at me. No, she's going to get mad at me if I say something like that. She's going to say, you knucklehead. We're going to be Christians. We ain't doing that. That's right. Yes. Amen. And she should do that. Amen. Okay, Pastor, but you said you were the head. But there's somebody above me. Yes. Who is it? It's God. There's somebody that outranks the husband, and it's God. That's right. And you don't disobey God to obey somebody that God outranks. I'm not trying to cause any problems today. God loves you. We love you. But you got to make a stand for what's right in your life. Okay? And I don't want to do anything that's going to cause my wife to lose respect for me. And you know what? If I'm being a hypocrite, it's going to cause her to lose respect for me. Yeah. Rightly so. Yes, sir. Yeah. We don't have to be that way. We can be Amen. what God says we can be. Yes. We can do it. Amen? Amen? We can do it. Because Jesus is that door of blessing. That door of opportunity. We can get into that place with God. And inside with Jesus is peace with God. Is forgiveness of sin. Is mercy. Is newness of life. Is eternal life. Brother and sister. Is love. Is protection is wisdom. We have the creator of all things telling us that if we lack wisdom, we don't know what to do. Let's ask of him and he will give us wisdom. Yes. He won't upbraid us. Yes, okay, he'll give it to us liberally or plentifully, brother and sister. He'll, he'll help you. I don't know what to do, pastor. Pray. Yes. Okay. Look to the word of God. We're here to help you also. You can't tell me anything that I probably haven't already heard. Okay? Well, I got a problem and I'm kind of ashamed of it. Well, most of the time we are ashamed when we have a problem, we do something wrong. If you need our help, we're here to help you. All you have to do is call me, okay? Talk to me uh, after church or whatever the case may be. We're here to help. Okay? We love you. God loves you. Okay? We're not here to say, ooh, you did what? Get away from me. No, it's not that way. And it's not that way with God. Right. Okay? Yeah, they ain't, ain't nothing you've done that God hasn't seen more of and worse. Right. Come on, God's been doing this a long time. Yes. Yeah. All the billions of people that lived up, have lived upon the earth, and we think we got some new thing going on. No, we don't. Okay? There's nothing new under the sun, and you're not going to shock God, okay? So let's let's just go ahead and have faith. Okay, that's what we need to do. We need to have faith, not be afraid. Fear is not faith. We've got to trust the Lord with our life. God is love. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6, we're talking about the door of blessing. But without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And this is the part people have a problem with. They don't have a problem believing that God is. Most people have that inherent belief that God is. I remember being a little kid. They tried to teach me in elementary school that we evolved from monkeys. And I looked at that teacher. I said, we didn't come from no monkeys. We came from God. They made me go sit in the corner. Uh -huh. I'll sit in the corner and believe in God. You believe what you, you think it like a monkey. I don't know what your problem is. Okay. I knew that we came from God, but this is the problem that we have. It's not that believing in that God is. 
This is the, we must believe that he is. This is the problem that people have because they can't believe that God would love them and God would forgive them and God yes. would help them. Yes. Okay, we must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yes. Okay? Amen. God will bless you. God wants to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you. Amen. God didn't create you for your life to be all messed up, yes. for you to be depressed, for you to be sad, for you to be always in turmoil and fussing and fighting with one another. It's not God's intention. God created us, brother and sister, in his image. Do you think that Jesus and the Father and the Holy Ghost are up in heaven fussing with each other? You didn't put the toilet seat down. <laughs> They're not doing that. Okay? They're not fussing. And I'm, I'm having fun today. Okay? We have fun. This is real life. Yes. Okay? We're having a good time today. But thank God, brother and sister, we don't have to be afraid. We can trust God with our lives. Okay? We don't have to feel that condemnation. The light is coming into the world. The sun has come up. He's risen from the dead. He's come to and paid for our sin, brother and sister. We don't have to be afraid. Amen? We can come to him. We can absolutely understand that he is not trying to condemn us. Yes. John 3 and 17, for God sent his son down to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes. He wants to save us. He wants to help us. Brother and sister, we don't want to, we don't need to reject that. We need to receive it. Right. We need to receive it, brother and sister. And you we need to learn, not only do I believe that God loves me, let me start loving God in return. Amen. Let me start loving God in return. Listen to what Jesus said about loving him. Okay? The Bible tells us we love him because he first loved us. Right. It also, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. First John 5 and 3, the Bible teaches us here, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Okay, let me give you another example. Boy, help me, Lord. <laughs> The married people are like, can you preach to the single people for a while? <laughs> you remember when you started going out? Huh? When you, you fell in love. Huh? It was never too late to talk to her. It was never too far to drive over there. Come on now. It didn't matter where she wanted to go eat. It was good. So it was expensive. It didn't matter. <laughs> Honey, can we go get a steak? Well, we could go. I got some Burger King coupons. <laughs> Do you remember them days? Uh, she didn't have to wonder why you didn't bring her flowers because you brought them without her even after. It didn't have to be Valentine's Day or birthday or anything or anniversary. Tell them, Pastor. <laughs> why? Because we were in love. And I believe you still are in love. Okay, but don't let that fire, that love go out. That's right. Don't let it go out in your relationship with one another. And you know what? Let's not yes. let it go out with God. Yes. When we first got saved. Yes. Man, we, God, if you want me to go to church, I'm going to church. Yes. I know I should do that. God, if you want me to start reading the Bible, I'll start reading the Bible. Amen. God, if you want me to, to pray and to talk to you, I'll talk to you, yes. God. I don't care how tired I am. I got off of work. I'm going to talk to you. Yes. Huh? Amen. Well, brother, sister, let's not let that love dissipate. Okay, let it grow. Yes. Let God continue to bless our lives. Let that love let and if and if it is diminishing, let God today by His Spirit breathe upon the coals of that fire and ignite that thing again. Yes. And let's have a fervent love in our hearts for God and for one another. Yes. Okay. Listen to what the Bible teaches us in the book of Romans. And I was touching on this earlier. Okay, talking about I don't have to worry about my wife because my wife loves God. Listen to this. This is Romans chapter 13, beginning in verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So what's he teaching us there? He's teaching us that all of these things that, that are taught in the Bible, we shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that, and, and uh, so forth and so on, they are summed up or they are uh, made possible through this one statement. If you love others as you love yourself, also, if we love God, that's the first and the greatest commandment. Okay, why? Because love doesn't do others wrong. That's the answer. Yes. Let's love God and we don't want to do God wrong. Amen. Let's love one another and we don't want to do one another wrong. Right. Where does love come from? God is love. Amen. We're talking about the door of blessing today. The door of blessing. Thank God that door of blessing is uh, open to each and every one of us. Amen. Each and every one of us. We have that opportunity this morning. And we know that God will do all that God says that he would do. He Look what he has done for you and I already. Look at what Jesus did, brother and sister. He knew that he came into this world to die. And he willingly offered himself as a sacrifice. It wasn't some clean, sanitized thing that he went through. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us about his crucifixion and all the pain and the sorrow that he suffered for yes. you and I. He didn't do that because he doesn't want us. He didn't do that because he won't forgive us. He didn't do that to let us go once we come to him. He did that, brother and sister, to do everything that he said he would do. Yes. Not only to forgive, not only to wash our sin away, yes. but to keep us and to bless us. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, I'm going to begin uh, reading in verse 7. Okay. Though, no, verse 8, let's go to verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. He suffered for you and I. In being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Okay? Brother and sister, he commends his love to you and I. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Or he proves it to you and I. And we are to look to him this morning. Because as we've taught and we've shared many times, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the one that has begun it and he can finish it. Amen. We preached last night, brother and sister, how that we don't want to get ahead of God. We want to follow God. We don't want to try to do God's work. Let God do God's work. Let God be God. Okay. And we'll just follow him and, and do what he directs us to in our lives. And you know the wonderful thing? The Bible teaches me that God's not going to place more upon us than we are able to bear. He won't allow us to be tempted above that which we are able. But with a temptation, God will make a way of escape yeah. that you and I are able to bear it. Amen. Okay, we can do it. We can step through that door of blessing and come to Jesus today. Amen. Listen to what he says, and I'm getting ready to close. Okay, in Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 7. Okay, he says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. In another place, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. He said, if we open the door, he will come in. Today, he is knocking on the door of our hearts. Will we open that door? And let that blessing come in. Will we accept Jesus Christ and all that he offers us this morning? You know, it's so good to know that your sins have been washed away. You've been forgiven. Mm -hmm. To have that burden of guilt lifted off of you. Yes. That condemnation taken away. Yes. To know that things are right between us and God. And we can have it today. This morning as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord as our sister begins to play and begins to sing. We're going to come and pray. The door of blessing is opened. Friend, will you come to Jesus today? 
we begin to gather up here in the front, come and pray. Someone will pray with you. God bless you today is our prayer.